Okay, here is another option of how to complete our first pumpkin project. So this is what we drew last week. Okay, I've got two things in front of us. I've got a box of different colored markers, uh, which is what I'm going to be using for this project. Um, and then I have some crayons. Okay, these are construction color Crayola crayons. These work really, really well on basically anything. Um, so all you're going to need is either crayons, markers, or coloring pencils to finish this project today. So if you need to run and go get those, hit pause right now and run and go grab whatever supplies you're going to need to finish coloring this picture. Okay, so we are going to start uh, by coloring from the top down. Now, this isn't something that we started to talk about last week, but or uh, with our last project, I'm sorry, but we have, I want to start thinking about clean areas and, and areas that are already colored. So in my experience, when we use things like markers or definitely oil pastels or watercolor paint, we want to be painting from the top of our paper to the bottom of our paper. That way our hand and our arm isn't laying down in paint or laying down in messy oil pastels, okay? And for me, the same rule applies for uh, these markers. Sometimes if I'm coloring the bottom and I'm holding the paper down, I'll get some marker on my hand, and then if I put it up here, it gets all messy. So I want to make sure that we're working from the top of our paper down to the bottom, Okay, this will allow us to really make sure that our picture ends up staying nice and clean. Now, our sky, we made it nighttime. We gave it a moon with a smiley face. Um, so normally we would use like a black for, uh, for uh, a moon or for the night sky. But for these pictures, and you can see them in some of your illustrated books at home, we're going to stick to like a purple. Purple is a great color to use because it's not too dark. Um, a lot of in a lot of books, you'll see that they use purple instead of black, or we'll use a combination of purples and blues. Um, that way, all the things that we drew will still show up. If we used black, it would cover up our birds that are flying and maybe part of our clouds, um, and it would interfere with our moon as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start with the yellow. This might be kind of hard to see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to put some circles. And then I'm going to put some star shapes. If you could do that star shape, it goes up, down, left, right, back. Great. If you can't, it's okay. We'll work on that later on. I like dots for my stars just as well as I like every, like those normal star shapes. Okay, now, I'm done with my yellow for right now. No, I'm not, silly goose. I'm gonna color in my moon yellow. The only thing that's gonna be left white on our picture is going to be the clouds. So there's our moon, now our moon is yellow. Now I'm gonna do a curious thing with this purple but it's going to make a lot of sense. And I did talk about it in one of our last videos. So I'm gonna take this purple and I'm going to be very, very, very careful with it, okay? Because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna work this way. If you're left-handed, you can start on this side and work that way. It's all about just keeping everything clean because sometimes these markers move. If you're using crayons, you don't really have that problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the stars that we made. Because I want to give it a bit of a border for when we color it in. I don't want these stars to get ruined. And yellow and purple, when they mix together, especially if you're using markers, especially watercolor markers, which is really what these are, they're washable. I have a project later on that we will be painting with these markers but I don't want to reveal all my tricks just yet. Okay, almost done with my stars. Last one. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing with our clouds. Our clouds are going to remain white. So now, instead of using the tip of my marker, I'm using that flat side because it's kind of like a cone shape. Okay, so it's giving me a bigger line to trace with. Okay, and I'm just carefully tracing around our clouds. See how that gives us a nice border? Look, I made a mistake. Let's see if you can zoom in and see my mistake. Boom. Boom shakalaka. Autofocus. I colored inside my cloud. Am I going to be upset with that? No. Mistakes happen. Don't worry about it. I make mistakes. You might make a mistake or two. It's okay to make mistakes. It's fine. It's part of the project. It's part of the learning process. Don't get upset if something doesn't look at, as well as mine does because, like I just had to do, I could zoom in and show you plenty of mistakes on my paper. If you make a mistake, ooh, there's another one. It's fine. Okay, now, we talked about moving down our paper before, right? Right. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a border across our horizon line, around our pumpkins, and stems. Remember, if I'm going too fast for you, hit pause. That's one of the best things about this, is that we're able to just kind of hit pause, catch up whenever we can. But this is a trick that I'd be showing you in class. This is a trick that that we will be doing a, a bunch of times with all of our projects. I'm gonna encourage this, really encourage this, for you to make this border around everything. That way, everything will just stay the way that, stay the color that you really want it to be. Oops. All right. Now it's time to color in. Because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start up here. I'm using the side of that marker. Sometimes when you color in really quickly, you get this. Okay, you see these little white lines, these little white spots? I started talking about that a few weeks ago. I call those ghost holes, okay? Must be something scary in there for you to, to, to miss it. So we just got to go back and color it in. We're not going to rush through this because we want to do the best job that we can. We could color right over those uh, birds that we made, those Vs and Ms, okay? Because they'll show back up. Now, something to remember, when we color in our skies, nighttime, daytime, and anytime, <laughs> our skies go all the way from the top of our paper to the bottom of our paper. And if we have objects in the way, like our stars or our pumpkins, they need to go and touch the stars and the pumpkins, just like I'm doing here. Okay. If I walked outside one day to come teach you, and I walked out with my kids, Aslan and Finnegan, and my wife, Mrs. Thompson, if I walked outside and I saw blue strip of sky, green strip of grass, and a big white floating blob in the middle, I'd be scared and I'd take our kids and we'd go back inside for the day because that does not look right. Something scares me about a big white blob floating in the middle of everything. So if you have a big white blob, don't send it to me. because That's super scary. Super scary stuff. Uh-uh. So we got to make sure that we're bringing our sky all the way down to our grass. 
purple's starting to run out a little bit. So right here, I'm going to stop with my sky. You're going to keep going with yours. So if you're still working on your sky, hit pause. And when you're done with your sky, I want you to uh, hit play. And we're going to talk about the bottom of our picture. Okay. So right now, hit pause. Finish your sky. And meet me at the bottom of our picture so that we can color in our pumpkins in the middle ground now that we're almost done with our background and we can work on our foreground which is the grass in front of us and the vines you're still watching I'm just finishing up now I'm done awesome purple marker goes away so our sky is done and now it's the time to work on our middle ground and our foreground the front of our picture the middle of our picture and the front of our picture now I told you before that I like to color from the top to the bottom so that our hands stay clean our picture stays clean and if you look we don't have any purple or yellow down here and if I look at my hands there's no purple, there's no yellow on my hands either. So the trick for me worked. Okay, so the next thing that we have to color, the top, the topmost thing that we need to color in right now is going to be our pumpkin stems. So we have our pumpkin stems here. We'll color those in green. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we'll switch to orange for our pumpkins. Now, if you have, if you're using coloring pencils or crayons and you have more than one shade of orange, that means you have like a light orange and a dark orange and a regular orange, try and use those. Okay. If I had a light orange and a dark orange marker and an orange orange marker, I'd be doing that with these three. But I chose markers for this. So all I have is my orange orange. All this orange talk is made, making me want to eat an orange. Color, color, color. Get rid of those ghost holes, Thompson. You see the difference between using the tip of the marker when you're coloring in and then using the side of the marker? makes a huge difference when we're working throughout our projects. If you are using a crayon, you could do the exact same thing. Okay? The side of the crayon tip is very, very similar to the side of, the, of this marker tip. Okay? You can use it to color in a bigger area compared to a smaller area with that tip. Orange marker is starting to run out. Uh oh. Quickly. Cool. One, two, three, two down, one to go. Now, if you also notice, I'm not going back and forth so much. I'm really going in a circular motion. It seems to me 
that coloring in a circle has a better chance to getting rid of those ghost spots and not even having them than coloring back and forth. Coloring back and forth, tend to have them coloring around in a circle, not so much. I don't know why, but it's working. Pumpkins, sky, stars, done. Boom. Now, there's something that I left out last week. And if you have a pencil and marker handy or something uh, that you could draw with, uh, we're going to add some leaves to these pumpkins. Now, they're not going to look like real pumpkin leaves because real pumpkin leaves are ginormous and they're kind of tricky to draw. Um, if you are at King's Road, you know that we have those big pumpkin patches uh, out by our doors uh, where you walk in and they are huge leaves. Or if you went pumpkin picking this weekend, which a lot of people did, uh, you would see those too. Okay, so we're gonna draw a more simple leaf. We're gonna start with a line, just a nice straight little line. And then I'm gonna put a raindrop shape around it. Careful to hold your paper down. Just like that. So we could change it up a little bit by making it longer and making a little curve to it. This one's gonna be upside down. So if you had a hard time doing that, very simple trick. Turn your paper right side up. I'll do it again here. And now you draw that raindrop shape. Whoever said that we had to have our paper going this the right way all the time? Not me. Add as many of these as you want, okay? If you don't want to add these, that's fine. I just realized that we were kind of missing something after our video from last week. And that's something, some big old pumpkin leaves. Cool. Now we've got that. So... We are going to color in our vines and our leaves, but we're going to use two different colors. For the vines, I'm going to use brown. And for the leaves, I found this other green, iguana green, Ooh. that we're going to use for our leaves. I used our regular green for our pumpkin stems, so I'm just trying to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to start with this iguana green. I'm going to carefully color in coloring in our leaves. These aren't too big, so it moves kind of quickly. Awesome. Tap the top back on that, make sure it snaps so you know that it is locked and closed. And then I'm just going to follow these vines around. Ooh, colored outside the line a little bit. Come on, Thompson. I'm just kidding. So here we are at the tail end of our picture. That means the end, but if your picture has a tail in it, that's fine too. I saw a bunch of our videos or our pictures coming back last week where some kindergartners got super creative and added faces to their pumpkins. That was fun to watch and see. So we have two things left. I'm going to go back to that regular green for our grass. And then we have our little pond right here that we're going to color in. Something that I want you to pay attention to. Our horizon line that goes across our paper. Sometimes it's hard for us to draw a line that goes straight across. Okay, And I was inspired by one kindergartner who drew uh, his horizon line basically on an angle. And 
to me, it looked like it was on a hill. And I thought, Mr. Thompson, that's a great idea. Let's have it on a hill instead of having it just flat on the ground. I mean, everything else is going to be flat on the ground. So if we have it on a hill. It's definitely more interesting looking. So thank you to that kindergartner for being a little inspiration for this picture. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to use our green marker and we're going to do something similar to that we did upstairs uh, on our sky, but almost to a lesser extent because it's going to be more just giving it a border like that and then kind of coloring in the rest. We don't have a lot of, we have a lot of stuff to go around, but it's a smaller area. So the border trick will work, but it's just going to work in smaller areas. See what I mean? This is another reason why I chose to use two different greens. If I used one green, my leaf would blend into the background. It wouldn't really look like a leaf. It would just look like a shape that's drawn on the ground. Okay, I'm going to allow you to finish coloring in all that stuff, try and use that same border method. Just kind of draw around everything. That way when we draw a little quicker, we know that we're not going to get green into our orange pumpkins. We don't need that. We want our orange pumpkins being orange, okay? The green onto the brown doesn't really affect it because the brown is such a dark color, okay? Now, the last thing that we're going to color, so I'm going to skip the rest of this. You're not. I am. Uh, it, we're going to go and color in our little pond that we drew. I found this awesome turquoise color. I want to give it a shot. I'm going to show you another little trick. Hopefully, it will work. I don't know. This is kind of a dark tur turquoise. So once again, working in a circular motion to color in a big area. Less waste, less of those little white gaps. Um, and let's see if this is going to work out. I don't know if it is because that, that turquoise is kind of dark. Okay, so I'm going to try and use a blue. And it shows up a little bit. Let's go back to a black. Oh yeah. So we're gonna add some waves. Boom. So your project is gonna be finished. I'm gonna finish coloring mine in. Oh, something that I haven't said. Please hold on to everything. I wanna see all your projects when we come back to school. Um, so. Don't throw anything out. I'm excited to see it. I've been see, I've been seeing the pictures coming in either attached to the Google form or on the um, on an email. But I like to see things in person too. So when you uh, when we come back, I'm going to ask you to bring all of your artwork in uh, so we can take a look at it. Okay. So finish this up. Finish coloring in that that grass. If you want to add anything more, remember this was just the basic basic start of it. Okay, so if you want to add more things, add more things. Get creative. Okay, if you want to add some ghosts or something spooky into the sky, we could do that too. Um, please try and fill out that Google form today um, and send me. If you cannot attach your picture to the Google form, that's okay. Just send me an email with your name, your homeroom teacher's name, and also the name of your school. Okay, so I need to know the difference between if you go to King's Road School or Central or Tory J, okay? So please make sure that you're sending all of that on. Have fun finishing this up. See you later.